What's going on guys? We are back from our volunteering and uh, two week trip in Cochrane. And I've had a lot of time now. I've got uh, 1400 kilometers on this uh, XRS, new XRS Gen 5 850. And wanted to bring you guys another video on this new 10 inch gauge. Um, I've seen some videos online, but um, I've played a lot with it and there's some stuff that hasn't actually been covered in some of the, uh, the couple of videos that at least I've seen online. So stay tuned. Hopefully this is gonna give you everything you need to know about this awesome new gauge from BRP. All right guys, well, welcome to the cockpit of my new 2023 Renegade XRS. Gonna do a quick overview of this uh, new gauge from BRP, this 10 inch gauge. This is the main screen when you fire it up uh, that you'll get to, and typically looks like this. Uh, you can see I swipe to the right, but usually when you turn the sled on, this is your main screen. You've got RPM on the right. You've got a bunch of options for what you can actually have uh, loaded in the center for data. And then on the left side, you've got your kilometers an hour. Uh, on the bottom here, I've got my trip A. You've got your outside, uh, or actually that's your engine temperature. And then you've got your fuel gauge. You got a power button where you can power down the screen. You've got quick uh, preferences there. And then you've got the icon to show whether or not your Bluetooth is actually connected to your phone or not. So I'm gonna do as much of a detailed walkthrough of this gauge as I can in this video. Uh, first thing I do wanna show you is there are four main screens that you can uh, basically get set up on the sled that will, um, I'll show you in a second, also can be um, accessed through your handlebar uh, buttons. Bottom uh, right corner here is what you'd use to get to your main, uh, all your main settings on the gauge itself. So anytime you want to go there, you just click that with your hand. You've got phone, you've got media, you've got statistics, you've got your vehicle, you've got preferences, you've got uh, BRP Go navigation, and then your handlebar, uh, handlebar control. So we'll go into each one of these as part of uh, this overview. So the first thing I want to show you is these four main views that you have available to you on the screen. This is the first one, which I just showed you. And when I click the page button again on the uh, left of the um, handlebar assembly, this one will give you all your data on the left, plus your mapping through BRP Go on the right. And we'll show you that after. Click it again and you get to your media so you can control your music. And then your next one gives you all your current ride information. So your average speed, your duration and distance. And basically this is nice because it resets every single time you start the sled and you start a new trip. So really, really like this feature this year and that's definitely new. All right, and then you're back to your main screen. So one of the things on the main screen is there's a couple of uh, kind of really cool hidden features that I haven't seen. And there's a lot of videos that are out there I know that have been circulating online. So I'm gonna show you uh, some of those features right now. If you hold this middle section, you can get rid of your coolant temperature. Hold it again, and that gives you your access to your suspension and your smart shock. So you can adjust for comfort, sport, or sport plus. So very nice, uh, very nice feature there. So we'll keep that in sport. And then you hold it again, that will give you battery voltage. Hold it again, that will give you back to your coolant temperature. So those are the options you have for that middle part of the display, which I really like. Some of the other hidden features um, that I don't know if anybody has actually figured out yet, but hopefully through this video, you'll see. The trip A down here, see how it says 379K? If you hold this, it will change to hours. Hold it again. It will change to trip B. So I've actually got almost 1400K on the sled now. Hold it again, it'll give you the hours for trip B. Hold it again, and it'll give you the total hours for the sled. Hold it again, and you're back to total kilometers for the machine. So those are um, really cool. I love being able to kind of adjust those uh, just with the touch of your finger. Uh, it's a really, really cool, cool feature. All right, let's take a look at um, going back to the main uh, display and settings again. So if you click this here, sorry, this one down here. So you'll see my phone is now connected, which is good. So I can show you some of the other features. So click that and let's take a look at your preferences. So this is the main settings um, where you can adjust absolutely everything. First thing you can adjust is display. I always keep it on 100 brightness and I like it on auto because then it shifts from dark mode or light mode uh, depending on the time of day. 
The next one is Bluetooth. You'll see my S22 is actually connected. Here you also have the ability to connect your uh, different Cardo headset or maybe you're using a Cena headset, any of the headsets for driver or passenger, you can connect through Bluetooth. Wi-Fi, you'll see that I'm connected to my home network, um, my Wi-Fi network at the house, and that just basically allows me to do any updates and push any updates that they might have for the gauge uh, directly through Wi-Fi. Then you can go to general where you can basically get all your settings for the units, English, time of date, any software updates, reset any settings, or you can even get uh, more information about the vehicle through that. The applets was that first four um, screen setting feature that I showed you. And you have the ability to actually change how many applets you actually want as part of that four uh, screen, kind of four main screen option. So you can remove your gauges, you can remove your statistics. You can basically show whichever included applets you want to have. So for me, I actually don't necessarily use media because I use everything through Cardo. So now you'll see when I go back to the main screen and I scroll through, you'll see I only have three different uh, screens now, right? So you'll see now I no longer have the media settings. So that's kind of how I like to keep um, my display options set up. So again, back into preferences and applet switcher. And again, you can customize that however you'd like to do that. The last one is your ride settings. And there is a button and I'm going to show kind of a detailed overview on the handlebar switch in a second. You can, this is your ride setting manager. And for that button, you can either have it adjust your suspension and your volume or one of the other. So right now, I have the ability to click once and I can adjust my suspension settings for the smart shocks. And if I click it again, I can adjust volume, but you can switch that as well. All right, that gives you kind of a, a, a you know, a quick view into some of the different preferences. Let's take a look at the vehicle settings as well. So again, if you go into vehicle, this is just another way where you can get to the suspension and your suspension adjustments. So that for me with smart shocks allows you to adjust between sport plus sport and comfort mode. Back to your main settings again, your controls. So this has uh, been a lot of talk online about kind of how BRP has integrated the heated grips and now giving you this heated ratio option for your, uh, your grips as well as your thumb. So you can see right now I have it on the lowest possible setting and you can just touch that and get to the setting that you want. And same thing, you can basically adjust how you want the heat distributed. You can either have more that goes towards the thumb or more that goes towards your grips. So that kind of gives you an idea as to what the controls are like for uh, adjusting your, uh, your heat options. I find that they work really, really well. Haven't had any issues. I actually find that it works better than the older uh, version as well, where you kind of just had either super hot or nothing. Um, it seems to be more balanced this year. All right, so if we go into statistics, this takes you back to that current ride display. And that's basically where you've got your average speed, duration, and distance. Now, what took me a little bit to figure out and I wanted to show you guys is if you go into, uh, let's just see where I can get to it. All right, so here's what I wanted to get to. So this took me a bit to figure out, but you basically, I'm always playing around with my trip A and trip B settings. So you always wanna be able to get that information. So you have to go to current ride and then back. And that's how you get to your trip A and your trip B settings. So I often like to adjust my trip A uh, settings. So if you click that, it will show you, okay, average speed for trip A was 42, duration eight and a half. Uh, that was 378 kilometers. And if you want to reset that, you just click that three dots up here and click reset trip. And that's your trip A. Trip B is basically, I think since I've had the sled, so you know I've got almost 1400 kilometers on it now and uh, almost 40 hours, average speed of 35 kilometers an hour. And same thing, you just click that and that's how you basically reset your trip. So I'm gonna leave my trip B, but my trip a is reset or I can go to my current ride. So this really reminds me of my, uh, my Ford F-150. Every time I get in it, 
it, it, it resets uh, for that particular trip. It shows me how far I've gone on electric mode. Um, I absolutely love this feature. I think it's amazing. And I love that they've included that this year as part of the, uh, the gauge package. So um, that pretty much covers, you know, the main functionality of the gauge. I'm going to show you guys a little bit on uh, BRP Go as well for the navigation. So if you click that, and hopefully this won't time out. And basically what you want to do is once you've got your phone all Bluetoothed up to the sled, you can plug it in and it should start BRP go automatically here. Let's see. There we go. Now it should go. There we go. So that will start BRP Go automatically, and then you basically just want to touch navigation, and this is going to pull up your OFSC uh, mapping. So agree to the terms of use. It takes a second. There we go. So you'll see um, right now it gives you a really great view of the map, and you can basically zoom in and zoom out quite nicely. So you'll see me at my house here. And if I keep scrolling out, hopefully you'll see some trails in a second. There you go. So you can now start to see where the trails are and it gives you the latest and greatest information of whether or not that trail information is open, closed. Um, that's the big thing that I love about it is it's, it's basically giving you the information right off of the OFSC um, site. And that's a huge bonus and probably the main bonus I would say over using something like a Garmin, which, uh, which we also use. So really, really love that feature and uh, it seems to work really well. All right, so if you look at this is where you'd get into any of your upcoming rides. And again, you basically want to do this all through BRP uh, Go app. This will give you the nearest locations or some of the uh, points of interest that you might want to navigate to. And you know, you basically can click any of those just like you would on a Garmin or in your vehicle. And then it will give you directions by trail right to uh, those locations. You've got um, favorites as, as well, which doesn't seem to be working right now. Let me just try this again. So these ones would be like food and gas options. And then you can also, if you had favorites, you can star them and basically keep all of your favorites um, on the next display over. And then this one here would take you back into your main settings, which just allows you to choose between metric and imperial. And then, then back to your main map. Anytime you press um, go, it's basically going to start your trip. So if you want to start riding and start recording your trip, you would do that and you would hit start. Um, I know a couple of guys have asked if you can actually have a full view of just the map on the display and I don't believe that's possible. We've tried a couple of different things and it doesn't look like it is possible. One of the things I will show you on this particular um, uh, layout, so when you have your map and then your, uh, your vehicle information on the left, if you hold another hidden feature, kilometers an hour, you will then get your kilometers an hour as well as a digital tack. So that's qu quite nice as well to, uh, to have that. Hold it again and it will take you back to kilometers an hour. All right guys, so let's take a look at the new handlebar cluster from BRP. And this is one thing that this year they've just really uh, done an outstanding job on. So I'm just gonna quickly go over some of the features. So on top here, that's gonna give you access to your handlebar and thumb warmer uh, settings on the machine. This right here is gonna give you, that's your settings for the vehicle, as well as the settings for the volume adjustment. So earlier in the video, I talked a little bit about those two applets that you can have for vehicle settings. So again, you can choose whether or not you want this to adjust just your smart shocks 
or just your uh, volume, or you can have it do both. So I've got it doing both right now. That's your microphone button. So that will allow you to, you know, say, hey Siri, um, call home, or hey Google, call home, if you're using a headset. And then on the front here, that's your four screen applet switcher right there. So those four main screens that I showed you at the beginning as well that you can um, kind of customize and choose which uh, screens you wanna have. That can either be four or you can go all the way down to one. Um, that's your applet switcher for your main screens. Then your, um, this is kind of your main selection switch, right? So you can go up, down on that or push it in for okay. Um, so that works really, really nicely. So again, you can, um, the beautiful thing about this is you can just access everything without moving your hand from the bars at all. That's gonna be your high beam, low beam, and that's gonna be your start and your uh, reverse button. So overall, it works really well. We'll see if we can fire this up again, just to show you um, some of that functionality with those switches in a little bit more detail. So we'll fire that up again. We'll hit confirm. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this back to, I'm gonna change this back to dark mode because it's probably easier to pick up on camera. There we go, so here's your applet switcher. So you can hit that once, that gives you your split screen with your mapping. Hit it again, it gives you your current ride statistics. Hit it again and it takes you back to your uh, your main screen. So really, really love that. And again, you hit that once that does your handlebar adjustment for your warmers and your, uh, let's just wait till that goes away. Click it, keep clicking it and you can adjust exactly what temps you want your handlebar warmers and thumb warmers to be at. Your settings button on top Click that and it allows me to adjust my smart shocks or volume. So smart shocks and then you would go up and down with your, um, let's hit that again. So up and down to go to sport plus sport or comfort. And then just click in to hit okay on whichever setting you want. Same thing if you wanna do volume, you click it twice and that will give you your volume and then you just hit up and down on the, uh, on the side here, up and down, and that will allow you to adjust uh, the level and then hit OK. All right, guys, well, that's basically the main overview for all the different uh, and walkthrough settings for your new 10 inch uh, BRP display. I really think they have knocked it out. I love the display this year. It's worked very well. Still have some of the same issues that we do with BRP Go and the navigation, just simply because when you're out of range of cell signal, uh, you're not always gonna get all the information. So we don't really use this quite often. I am gonna play uh, a lot more with it this year. And as I get more, uh, you know, more time with it, uh, with that in the app, I might actually do another video showing some more detail around that, but I just wanted to give you guys kind of the full overview today as to all the features and functionality that's built into this wicked new 10 inch display from BRP. Hope that's helpful guys. Please reach out with any questions. Appreciate you guys watching the channel and we will see you on the next video. If you like that video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the Sled Addicts YouTube channel where we release content on everything snowmobiling. Also hit that bell icon so you can be updated every time we release new videos.